In this video, we'll learn about one-to-one -one functions and inverse functions. Let's start with one-to-one. -one. The definition of a function being one-to-one -one is that different inputs always correspond to different outputs. Now this can sometimes be hard to detect, but let's just look at a couple of examples. The function f of x equals x squared is not one-to-one, -one because I can think of two different inputs that give me the same output. For example, f of 3 is 3 squared, which is 9, but f of minus 3 is minus 3 squared, which is also 9. So because different inputs did not give me different outputs, that means this function is not 1 to 1. But a function like f of x equals 2x plus 3, that function is 1 to 1. Now, I can't show you that with an example, because if I plug in two different numbers, I'm always going to get two different answers. But I can think about this graphically. If I were going to graph the function y equals 2x plus 3, it looks a little something like this. It has slope positive 2 and y-intercept at the point 0, 3. But what you can tell here is that if I plug in different numbers, no matter what different numbers I plug in, I'm always going to get different y-values. So this gives us a way to graphically tell whether or not a, the graph of a function represents a function that's one-to-one. -one. And this is something called the horizontal line test. And it says that if every horizontal line crosses the graph of your function in at most one point, then your function is one-to-one. -one. So that means that it's okay for a horizontal line to cross your function once. In fact, it's okay for a horizontal line to never cross the graph of your function. But if the horizontal line crosses the graph more than once, then your function is not one-to-one. -one. So again, just to give you an example, here's my axes. I'll draw something like this. So here's a function. Don't exactly know what the formula for that function is, but what I can tell is that any horizontal line that I draw is never going to cross the graph of my function more than once. So that means that this function is one-to-one. -one. But if I draw a function something like this, Now, some of those horizontal lines are okay. This one doesn't cross my graph at all, which is okay. This one crosses my graph exactly once. That's okay. But this horizontal line crosses my function four times. Here, 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 and here. So that means that this function is not a one-to-one -one function. So this one is one-to-one. -one, but this one is not one-to-one. -one. Okay. okay, so what about the inverse of a function? Let's suppose that we had an example where we have a function where, let's say, we have a domain A, B, C, D and a codomain 1, 2, 3, 4. And this function sends A to 2, it sends B to 3, it sends C to 1, and it sends D to 4. So this is maybe my function f. Well, then notice that this function is 1 to 1 every pair of different inputs goes to a different output. So you never have two different inputs going to the same place. And what that lets us do is it lets us reverse this function. And really the, the right word is invert, but the idea is that we're going to take all those arrows and we're going to flip them around. The set that used to be our codomain is going to be our domain of our new function. The thing that used to be the domain is now going to be the codomain. And we're going to make all these arrows go backwards. So instead of an arrow pointing from C to 1, we're going to have an arrow pointing from 1 to C. Instead of an arrow from A to 2, we're going to have an arrow from 2 to A. Instead of B pointing to 3, 3 is pointing to B. Instead of D pointing to 4, 4 points to D. And so this function we call F inverse. And the idea is that if your function is 1 to 1, then it has an inverse. And the rule for is that y equals f of x if and only if x equals f inverse of y. So the idea is that the f inverse function does the exact opposite of what the f function does. Now we have to be careful here. Our notation for inverse is a little bit unfortunate. It's, it looks like f to the minus 1. This does not mean 1 over f. I know it looks like something raised to the negative 1 you're used to thinking of as 1 over, but it does not mean 1 over f. What it means is the inverse function of f. So from now on, whenever you see a negative 1 exponent, you have to be really careful and think about whether you're thinking about reciprocals, 1 over something, or whether you're thinking about inverses. 
Usually it'll be clear from the context, but just be aware of that. 